Brothers, so good to be here. You know what really inspired me this morning? Walking in here and seeing so many pandemic babies. <laughs> New disciples that were baptized during the pandemic. And I hope that we will have many, many, many more pandemic babies. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's have a look there. You know, when you think of marriage, one of the things that comes hand in hand with marriage is babies, right? And the Bible does talk in different places about babies. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 is one of them. It says, brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. So if you're a pandemic baby, it's saying you're worldly. <laughs> that's not me, that's the Bible. You know, and of course, you know, how long you stay worldly depends on you. But what, what Paul means is, <clears throat> you, you are a soul, that disciple, you love God, but you haven't really been through the, the training <clears throat> and the refining fires yet. <clears throat> but I'm not here to talk about babies today. <laughs> I know Michael is getting worried there. <laughs> I want to extend this a little bit to marriage. If you're a newly married man, we could say, by definition, you may have a worldly marriage. Now, I'm glad I'm a big guy, so guys like Samuel and Luke and Paul Busari cannot attack me after I'm done speaking here. <laughs> But because when you're newly married, you're going to have challenges you've never had before. You're going to have a calling that you have never had before. One of the first brothers that came to me when I walked in, it was Daniel. He said, Michael, bro, you're so much bigger than you are on Zoom. <laughs> <coughs> I said, yeah, I think you're right about that. <laughs> but you know, there's no one that knows you better than your wife. Amen. People may have a certain picture of you in the fellowship, but your wife really knows who you truly are. I want us to go to John chapter 12. <clears throat> and forgive my coughing here because... Um, You know, as, as, as Jesus said, the, the, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak, Amen. right? So, but that's a good place to be when you have to preach the word. <clears throat> so John chapter 12, <clears throat> Jesus here right before he's about to be crucified. And he says in verse 32, but I, when I am lifted from the earth, will draw all men to myself. See, what draws people to Jesus? It's not apologetics. It is through inspiration, through sacrifice, through being a godly man. And so marriage is not a call to comfort or pleasure. It's a call to a higher level of sacrifice and Christ-likeness. The amazing thing about marriage is you can outshine the world so easily. Yes. Now, if you're a campus student, that's awesome. I used to be one, as you can see, long, long time ago. <laughs> But yes, there was university when I was young. <laughs> And you can get great grades, but you know what? Many other students are going to have great grades that are not disciples. You can really excel in your work, and you need to. But you know what? Plenty of non-disciples give their heart to excel in their work. But marriage is different. Marriage is an institution from God. And it will only <coughs> work if you do it God's way. Amen. And so for all of us who are married, 
We should outshine the world. We need to shine more brightly than anyone else in the church. <clears throat> but yet, we think of the married people in the church. We do not think about those that really increase the brightness of the church. We think that those are the campus guys. Those are the, the singles who have more time. <clears throat> but it's not like, it should not be like that at all. Far, far from that. Amen. See, from the moment you get married, eventually as your marriage, your marriage develops, you're going to be partners in the gospel with your wife, or you're going to be partners in sin with your wife. The choice really is yours. <clears throat> I want us to go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 here. And I, I want us to get practical. But, but first of all, I really want you to be, I really want to persuade you. And I want, to, I want you to be convinced <clears throat> if you are married, you should be shining all the more brightly. You should be shining all the more brightly. If you think, as a single brother, that it's hard to live in a brother's household and to wake up and see all your fellow brothers with, in all their morning glory, <laughs> unshaven, not having brushed their teeth. And I won't go into more details because Chris Worth asked me not to do that. <laughs> if you think that is a challenge <clears throat> and you say, man, I cannot wait to get married. Man, you are in for a sad surprise. <laughs> you do not know what is awaiting you when you're married <clears throat> and you have a wife who's counting on you to meet her emotional needs. Your wife, <clears throat> who you cannot go away from. <laughs> And hopefully you don't want to go away from me either. Your wife, who is far more talkative than any of your roommates at the moment. <laughs> if you think you have a talkative roommate, bro, you are not ready to get married yet. <laughs> You've got to shelve it. Get used to your roommates, and now you can get married. Oh, thank you. After you find someone, of course, to marry. So let's get real practical here. Ephesians chapter 5. It's a scripture that um, if you're married, it's kind of like Matthew 28. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when, when they tell you, when they tell you to go to Ephesians 5, you know what's coming. <laughs> but yet it needs to be preached because it's not being done. Right? The scriptures that I use more often are actually a reflection of what we do the least and need to do the most. And I've been discipled more in my last eight years coming to London than the 22 years before that. And... You know, after a while, <clears throat> I would just get so upset when Michael would say, go to this and this scripture. <laughs> again, and again, and again. And for me, those were about leading my wife and being the father that I need to be. And you know, it, I mean, the good thing is, it only took me seven and a half years to get it, you know. <laughs> So, <laughs> if, if you feel convicted, believe me, there is hope for you. <laughs> There's hope for you. 
But let's go to the Word of God. <clears throat> Ephesians 5.25 Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by washing with the Word. Sorry, by the washing with water through the Word and to present her to himself as a radiant church. Now, I want to clarify here because, you know, as, as brothers, we can sometimes read this and we read wash in the word, but we practice butcher her in the word. That's not what it's talking about here. So how can you make sure you are washing your wife in the word rather than butchering her in the word? Well, I have a challenge for all of us married men. You ready for it? Yeah. You ready to take on the challenge? Yeah. Amen. What I challenge you to do and what I challenge myself to do and what I've been doing a lot the last couple of months is showing, my, showing Maria scriptures but not telling her that that is what she has to do. I'm telling her to imitate my example in this. Amen. In other words, you practice what you preach. Amen. And that will help us to stay humble, to be sensitive, and to do it out of love Amen. rather than, I am the leader woman, you must submit to me. If not, you are in sin. You know, from the minute you have to claim authority, it's because you already lost it. <laughs> you lost it. So I want to give you practical. Come on, bro. All of us married spend one hour a day with our wives. What do we do? You can spend 15 minutes her praying, 15 minutes you praying, and the other 30 minutes to look at the Word. And so not just share your opinions and your feelings, but share with her the Word of God. <clears throat> Wash her in the Word of God and lead her by example. <clears throat> if you're in a full-time ministry, that's easy for you to do. Amen. If you're single, it's easy for you to do. If you're married and no kids, it is easy for you to do. Amen. If you're married with kids, you can do it. <laughs> now, if you're married with kids and not in the full-time ministry and you have three studies in one day, it becomes a bit more challenging. But I do believe that the issue with the marriage is not having too many studies, but not enough studies. So brothers, be fruitful through your marriage. Amen. <laughs>